up everybody how's it going let's make sure you can see me and hear me okay before we go any further please 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 i can see myself on here just don't know if you can hear me or not i'll give it a sec see what comes in on the comments
Looks like Call of the Wild's on here. Jim Dabrowski's on here. Mark Pearson's on here. There we go. Pat Enos is on here. Pat, I got to send out your flies. I'm sorry. I haven't done that yet. I'm uh, I'm back up and running now at about 95% capacity, so I will get that done. Reds 26 is on here. I see a lot of Tangle Tackle Army members on here. Good to see you guys and gals. Todd saying hi everybody. Can't wait for tonight's topic. Your spoon dipsy was your hottest rod. Yeah, it's uh, it's not it's not uh, rocket surgery in any way. Uh, it's going to be a pretty quick topic actually, but we'll I'll go over how we do it on my boat. It's so simple, and uh, I'll be honest with you. A lot of Lima Charlie's coming. In. Thanks guys. Um, thanks. I'm on the boat. Obviously, you can see that around me. Um, it's a great setting. I'd like to be out on the back, but they're mowing the mowing the grass right now so it'd be a little loud out there but uh i used to be i guess against spoons on divers uh spoons on dipsies and i think it was more of just my mindset uh just because i'd never done it i thought to myself you know it was from the people that taught me how to do all this stuff they had never done it i was never you know i'd never talked to anybody that did it so i think it just got into my brain that uh, you just don't do spoons on divers and man last couple three years i've changed my mind wholeheartedly so old dog new tricks definitely definitely works sometimes ryan art what up to you brad shook how you doing steven Steele also Good. Seeing a lot of Army members on here. Again, if you want to join the Tangle Tackle Army, the uh, link is down in the description. With that, you get the free entry into the charter giveaway at the end of the year. And you also get access to our private Discord page. Just remember, if you do join the Tangle Tackle Army, you want to get on to the Discord page, you got to email me um, so I can check it out, make sure you're a member then I will send you the invite. And uh, all you got to do is email me at the email in the description and we will we'll get you hooked up on that. But yeah, it's fun. I like I like the Discord. I like going on there and chatting. A lot of good information being shared. Lots of good pictures, lots of recipes. There's categories for everything on there. We talk about everything from big lake fishing to small lake to river fishing to hunting fishing, recipes, you name it. Dan, bunch of letters, 85, saying you caught your first king on that setup. Yeah, it works. It works. Uh, my first mate's on here, Blind Osprey. Tim, yeah, definitely saying it works. He killed him last year on a, on a diver with a spoon. And that's really where I became a believer, is watching him take all those daggone bites over on his side, whooping my butt. So, <laughs> yeah, he made, he made me a believer. And, uh, yeah, so anyway. We'll talk about that. We'll do that tonight. It, it, it's going to be a quick topic. There's not much to it. There really isn't. But I'll show you exactly how we do it on, on my boat. It's really, really easy. A couple other things I wanted to go over real quick. Uh, one was the Tangle Tangle Army. That's there. You can join if you want to. Patreon is available as well. So just remember, if you, if you support us on Patreon and on the Tangle Tangle Army, you get your name into the charter giveaway twice. Uh, so that might be incentive to some people. If you want to try to win a free charter with us out on the, on the big lake, follow us on the, or support us on both way, or in both ways. And you get two free, uh, two entries into that. So, yeah. Also this weekend is the tight lines for troops tournament. If you don't know what that is, it is a veterans organization. Well, it's a veterans fishing tournament, uh, in a nutshell. Bunch of boats get involved, bunch of charter boats, also some weekend boats all get involved. I think there's close to 60 or 70 boats last year. We all take out four or five veterans out on the big lake uh, for a day of fishing. It's a fun competition. There is no prize money. It's more bragging rights than anything. It's it's a one fish, big fish tournament, but we try to catch as many as we can. Uh, tight lines for troop, I'm sorry, tightlinesfortroops.com is the website. If you want to, well, A, if you want to try to participate, it's too late this year. you got to get your applications in pretty early. But that we've been doing this now. I think this is the 11th year. So if next year, if, you, if you're interested, you're a veteran, you want to try to get out there with us, that's the way to do it. But this year, if you want to come out and support everybody, what they do is they line the pier heads 
up and down First Street Beach, uh, the First Street uh, Launch Pierheads, and everybody comes out with flags and banners and yelling and screaming and waving. It is a great time. It's a great event. If you want to be involved in that, go on that website, tightlinesfortroops.com. It's either .com or .org. And if you want to be involved in that, lining the pierheads, lining the beaches, uh, waving to the veterans, showing your support, come on out. Do it. It's a blast. It's an absolute blast. The boats all dress up. We, we run flags on the boats. It's a good time. We've done this ourselves six or seven times now. Five, six times? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, every time I get to watch the veteran spaces and the way that they light up when we come into the come into the pier heads and everybody is lined up there uh, on both sides, both sides, going crazy. And then typically the Coast Guard sends a Blackhawk overhead as well. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, come out if you want to. We'd love to see you out there. Call the Wild Outdoors, need any more boats? Call the Wild, everything is closed now. Uh, it, as far as boats getting involved and veterans getting involved, I believe everything closed a few weeks back. So thanks for the offer, but keep that in mind for next year. All right. Just catching up on some comments. Don't forget to jump on this week's poll. we got 62 votes on there already. How many people we got on here? We got about 100 people on here. Good to see everybody. Happy Mother's Day, also, to all of you out there. If you're, if we got moms on the channel. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to my wife and to my mom as well. Um, love you guys. And uh, that was your day. Had a blast just hanging out. Uh, didn't get to see my mom. Got to talk to her on the phone. We live three hours apart, but we had a nice chat on the phone. But happy Mother's Day to everyone. And that's why we're a day late this week. We normally do this every Sunday at 7 p.m. If you're brand new here. Excuse me. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Chris. I run Dark Blue Charters in Manistee, Michigan. My website link is down below. We do this uh, live stream every Sunday night at 7 p.m. We talk about everything, big lake fishing, inland lake fishing, ice fishing, you name it. We love to just talk on here. And uh, if you're not a, a subscriber yet, feel free to do so. I would love to have, uh, have you along. We uh, It's a fun channel. It's a fun channel. Anyway. The poll question for this week is if you could fish one salmon tournament, it would be any Manistee tournament, the Ludington Offshore, the Holland Big Red Classic, or other. And please list your other in the comments. Right now, the leader is the Ludington Offshore. That's a darn good tournament. That's a blast. Manistee, Ludington's at 39%, Manistee 31 other. 23 and the Holland at 8%. I threw Holland in there just because they got such a good payout. I know a lot of people fish that because it is a, if you win that, you're going to, you're going to get a nice check. No doubt about it. Ludington too. You can take home a real nice check, especially if you fish the big boys, you can take home a big check. But anyway, we'll let that poll run. Please take a moment to jump on it. If you, uh, if you haven't already. All right. All right. Uh, also, I would be I would be remiss if I didn't remind everybody that these Sunday night slash Monday night live streams are probably brought to you by Dreamweaver Lures. Check them out at dreamweaverlures.com. <music> Love Dreamweaver. All right. So for an upcoming live stream, I'm always looking for new ideas, of course. Always looking for, uh, I love I love reading the comments on here because I do get some good ideas from everybody that comes on here. Gives me ideas for live streams that they would like to see, seminars that they would like to see, things like that. Um, but one thing that I've been wanting to talk about is uh, a company that I've been working with, well, not really working with, a little in a little way, but a company that I've been uh, running their gear for the last couple of years and I've been super impressed with. And I know that these live streams are Dreamweaver sponsored, but Dreamweaver also understands and supports uh, that we do use other gear on this boat. If you've seen Scott Argent Singer come out here from Dreamweaver, you know he talks about running other gear. And one of the other companies that I've been using lately and have been highly impressed with is GRC Trolling Products. Uh, this is one of their meat rigs right here. He, his name is Patrick. 
They are in New York. I know that. He sent me a package of GRC products this spring, and I've been wanting to show them on the channel. And I'm just going to give you a quick tease on these tonight. We're going to talk about these maybe next Sunday because I want you guys to see these things. I know that he hand ties all his gear, and they're quite popular in New York, and they're starting to get over more into the Michigan side. Um, I'll just give you a little look here, if you can see it through, through the package. His meat rigs are fantastic. He was using John King meat heads, which I think are the best meat heads on the market. And just recently, this year, he is now producing his own meat heads. So he's designed his own uh, to run true out of the package. No tweaking necessary. No bending, no flexing, anything like that. Um, yeah, and so I'm excited to try his new meat heads this year. This, the only thing I wish, Patrick, if you're on here, the only thing I wish is... You don't have names of the meat rigs on the packaging anywhere. I wish you did because this one right here is an all UV with a UV, like a little boy blue teaser on there. That thing for me last year behind a, uh, a Netminder Showtime was smoking hot. Smoking hot. I wish I knew the name of that thing. But uh, give you an idea of some other things. He does, all, he does a lot of custom stuff too. I mean, just good-looking gear. His flies are really good, too. He sent me some flies. He sent me Laker bells, so cowbells. He makes his own of those as well. This was, actually, there's a name on this one, the lime juice. This one for me last year, when meat just finally started going, it never really got going crazy good last year, but when it finally started going, that one, that lime juice for me was a hot one for a while. I like that one. I like that one a lot. Anyway, a little teaser. I want to talk about this. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. And uh, we're going to look more into the GRC products probably either next Sunday or the Sunday after. Some, sometime in there. I'm going to show you the flies, the custom stuff he sent me. Pretty cool stuff. I know all you guys and gals out there, you love good gear. This is good gear. This is good gear. This is good gear, too. So happy to show you all that. <clears throat> oh, Patrick's on here. He just said I'm on. Good to see you, Patrick. And Todd saying Patrick makes killer flies. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out there for a sec. All right. Yeah, Patrick, I see you. You're on here. Good. Glad you're here, man. If you guys got any questions about GRC trolling products, Patrick Johan is the owner. He's on here. You're welcome to ask away. Ask away on anything that you like. Anyway, let's get into the fishing report. I'll do the fishing report, and then we'll do the topic of the week. And then, uh, like we normally do, I will stick around after the visual aspect shuts down. And if I miss any questions, you have questions you still need answered, I will stick around, and I will answer them in the comments section. So, anyway, let's do the fishing report. <laughs> All right, weekly fishing report, and this is for Manistee. Uh, probably it's going to touch Ludington a little. I don't know about Frankfurt very much, but I'm sure up and down the coast it's going to vary in some ways. But primarily Manistee, Ludington, maybe even Muskegon, Saug or not Saugatuck, I'm sorry. Um, could be, maybe. Um, Holland, areas like that. Fishing is good. Fishing is really good. Uh, how do I want to say this? I'm I'm impressed. I am impressed by the class of kings that are already up here in Manistee. So if you didn't know, I had some boat trouble over the last couple of weeks. One of my, well, my starboard side um, shaft was leaking. I was, I, was, I was slowly sinking, not in a bad way, but uh, it definitely needed to be repaired. Got that repaired. Uh, finally got out for my first trip on, la, 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 what day was that? What day was that? Saturday. Saturday morning, finally got out for my first trip. The boat ran great. Started off a little shallow, start off to the south, start off down by the 12s in the past. There's sometimes some good fishing down that way. Started a little shallower. Worked anywhere from 60 out to about 110. Had five king bites in there. Ended up putting two of them in the box. Wasn't really impressed with what was going on in there. And then I got a call from my friend. Uh, his name's Jeremy. A lot of people call him Tiny. He said, get your butt out here to deeper water, straight out of Manistee. Uh, he, his bite was on. So we motored out there slowly. I found my way through the pack, which was, there was quite a few boats out, surprisingly, this time of the year. But 
motored out through the pack, got out to 250 foot of water, put it on a North Troll, put down a 300 copper, put my high diver out to 210. Uh, we left the two colors out there. We left the four colors. We left the five colors. We left the 10 color. Had a 225 copper out of 300 copper. Downriggers, the center downrigger was 125. That took a bite. Starboard side was down 55, I believe. That took a bite. Port side downrigger never got touched. Uh, 300 copper went several times. The 210 high diver went several times. Soon as we got out there in that 250 foot of water on that North Troll, boom, 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 boom. Ended up having 14 bites uh, and we got pretty much saved. My buddy Tiny bailed me out. Because we didn't get out there to probably close to 9, 9.30. And for us to have another... Oh, you know, another, what is 14 subtract five? We had another nine bites out there just in the last couple of hours with the high sun. And the fish were all over the place. We had them on two colors. Like I said, we had them on three colors. We had them on four colors, 300 coppers, 225 coppers, you name it, 125 shoot rigger. That thing was down there spinning away. But it was all a spoon bite. It was uh, primarily a spoon bite. Like I said, we had one touch on the center down rigger. That was a big 11-inch Dreamweaver double slick paddle with a custom fly on there. That got bumped once, and that was the only touch on that thing. But uh, we weren't marking a lot of fish out there as well. Uh, the current definitely favored a North Troll. We we trolled up to about the probably mid-17s, maybe bottom of the 17s. I spun her around, came back through my marks, going southbound. And I knew within a quarter mile, it was a garbage stroll. I could just feel it. The, the boat was just not slipping right through the waves. I was getting a little crab crawl on her. Uh, the speed was not what I liked. I could just feel it. You know you know what that's like. If you, if you fish a long time out there, if you get on a bad troll, you just feel it. So we ran her back down maybe another mile past that, spun her back around back on the north troll, and then the bites picked up again. So... Anyway, let me show you the spoons that were working for us. And it's no surprise. It's pretty much the uh, the standard spring lineup. Um, Nick Deere saying Ludington was super slow last weekend. Sorry to hear that, Nick. Anyway, let me show you what was on the lineup. Some of the, some of the good ones, of course. The UV Blue Dolphin and the Green Dolphin Glow. Of course, they're out there. They both took bites. The... I can't remember if this is the modified blue dolphin or the holographic. I think that's the modified. That was out there. That took a bite. My uh, first mate, Tim, was run, running the green goober, the green goby from Moonshine down on his downrigger. That took a bite. The or, or I'm sorry, the UV Jordo, the stinger, stinger sized UV Jordo took our first fish on a two color of the day. First fish of the year. Thank you, Mr. Jordo. The Stinger, Stingray size, can't afford it. Took a bite on a four color. That is such a stupid good spoon. I'm surprised we didn't have more bites on that thing. That is just a really, really good spring spoon. Uh, the two top spoons of the day, though, were the Michigan Dolphin. And then, like I said, on my high diver back to 10, the Captain Gary's Michigan Dolphin. That thing was going really, really good. And that thing was going pretty good as well. But that one was probably our best spoon of the day. And that's not surprising. That's a fantastic, uh, a fantastic spring spoon. That Dreamweaver Super Slim. They make it in a, in a few different variations also. You got the, the standard Captain Gary's Michigan Dolphin. They also make it in a WV Michigan Dolphin or Gary's Michigan Dolphin. And they also make it, I believe, in a gold back Gary's Michigan Dolphin. But that one, money. Money, 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 money. I'll be running that one this weekend for sure. For sure. Anyway, like I said, deeper water was definitely holding the better fish. The fish are healthy. I am impressed with what I saw out there that came into the boat. Our kings were anywhere from probably six, seven pounds up to mid teens. All of them got beautiful purple iridescent back on them. Great shine to them. I mean, great 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 looking silver fish super healthy the meat was super healthy strong fish fought like tanks you know how spring kings are customers had a blast there are several fish already coming in over 20 pounds for the year guys gals i 
it's going to be a good season. It's going to be. I, if something, as long as something catastrophic, 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 my God, uh, doesn't happen, uh, it's going to be a really good season. Now, I guess the question is, what are the Kings going to do? Because typical years here in Manistee, they will get up to Manistee, up to far as far as Frankfurt, and a lot of times they will just make a left turn and head over to Wisconsin. Last year they did that, but not for as long as they normally do. Last year we had pretty, pretty darn good king fishing all the way through the month of June. A little lull towards the end of the month of June and a little lull in the beginning of July. But other than that, we had pretty good king fishing all the way through the season. So if that if that's gonna play out this year the same as it did last year, I'm looking forward to a really good season. I think it's gonna be great. That reminds me, if you guys want to go fishing, I have openings. Uh, May is, I don't know why, May is normally my toughest month to book. May can be some of the best fishing out there. I do have quite a few openings here in the month of May. If you want to get out there with me, uh, don't forget I'm running a weekday special. Book a trip to take place on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday before July 20th, and you get 100 bucks off your trip. So if you want to get out there for some of this bonsai good fishing on my boat, Give me a call. My phone number, or I'm sorry, my email is down below. My website's down below. My phone number's on there. Email me, call me, text me, whatever you want to do. I'd be happy to get you out there. So, <laughs> Tim Blind Osprey, <laughs> give me way too much credit. Captain Gary and Captain Chris equals King's Dying. Thanks, Tim, man. You're a good guy. I, and don't. Don't let Tim fool you. The, the guy is also a salmon slayer. I'd love having him on the boat. Tim's a heck of a good fisherman. So um, I'm, uh, I'm very, very pleased to have Timmy on the boat with me. It, it makes my job much, much easier having a very good fisherman on the other side of the boat. So, yeah, if you want to uh, <laughs> get this traffic and cat catastrophe in boat traffic. Thanks, Todd. Thanks. Uh, yeah, if you want to go out fishing with me and Tim, Hey, give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. I'd be happy to get you out there, take advantage of that weekday special, and fishing's good. Let's go do it. I'm I'm really excited. Anyway, where am I going here? Uh, fishing report for other ports. You know, I, of course, Nick Deere was on here saying Ludington was slow. I've heard that Pentwater, Pentwater a week or a week and a half ago was just smoking hot. That slowed down. Um, I've heard that Montague is really good right now. Muskegon's pretty decent as well. And I think what we're experiencing is just the kings doing their natural migration from the southern basin up to the northern waters. And then, of course, they will go out and put on the feed bag wherever they want to go. And then, of course, towards the end of the season, they will start migrating back towards the river mouse, stream mouse, things like that for their for their fall run. So just a normal year. Normal year, except for I think it's going to be really big fish and a bunch of them. All right. That's what I got for a fishing report. Hope that helped you guys out in some way. Uh, I, I can't wait to get back out there. I got a trip on Wednesday. I got a full day trip on Wednesday. I'm pretty darn excited to get back out there and get after them. All right. Anyway, let's get into the topic of the week. We will talk about running spoons on divers. Pretty darn simple. Uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, spoons on divers. Like I said, Steve Eddy, good to see you on here, man. Uh, Kirsten Meyer. Kirsten and Tiny, her husband Tiny, they are the ones that gave me the intel on where to go on my last trip. So thank you very much, Kirsten. I owe you guys a six-pack of something cold. So, yeah, um, that that's what a good network is all about. Uh, you know, I was talking to my customers that day, and, when the phone rang and I said, hey, this is what's going on. We're going to make a move. And I said, this is what a good network is all about. If I'm catching fish, I'll be one of the first ones on the phone to talk to the other guys out there and let them know what's going on. And I'm lucky enough to have a really good group of people around me as well that uh, will, won't hesitate to call me if they're into something good. So that's, I tell you, it's worth its weight in gold. Anyway, divers on spoons. Like I said, I used to be I never did spoons on divers up to about two, three years ago. Just didn't do it. Maybe once or twice, just didn't do it though. 
And again, it was my own stupid fault because I got in that mindset. I just never done it. So oh, why start? So, you know, it's easy to get in those dumb ruts. And I was definitely, definitely in one. So anyway, divers, you guys all know what divers are. Most people call them, they call them dipsy divers, even though a dipsy diver is a lure Jensen product. So I, it always kind of cracks me up when I'm in the shop and people will say, you know, what kind of dipsy diver do you run? And really by the name right there, you're already saying, you know, what you run, but you know, what kind of dipsy diver do you run? Well, I run Dreamweaver Deeper Divers, and I cannot say enough good things about these. The two that I run are the 107 size for my high divers and the 124 size for my low divers. That's got the big weight on it. You can see that big old weight on that one for the low diver and the smaller weight for the high diver. It's one thing I like about Dreamweaver Divers is you know, with lure gents and dipsy divers, no doubt about it, they're a good diver. They are. But, you you know, you can play around with those rings. You know, you take a ring off, put one on, try to get more depth one way or another. It's just so much easier for me to go, yep, that 107 is my high diver. I know where it's going to run. There's a chart on the back. And you can figure out your depths that way, but you kind of remember them after a while as well. And then the 124 size, yeah, you know, I know where that runs as well. So it's just nice to, to take some of the guesswork out. Don't overthink this stuff. You've heard me say that a million times. Take all the guesswork out of everything that you can and just stick with what is simple and you know right there in the old noodle when you need to know it. And I know how these things run and I know the depths on how they run, so I trust them. I absolutely trust them. And you guys all know also, if you've been on this channel for any length of time, that is about the only color diver I run. If I don't, if I can't get black divers, I paint them black. I will buy the the, <laughs> the ugly divers from Dreamweaver, and it's okay to call them ugly divers because we joke about it all the time. But I will get those whatever colored Dreamweaver deeper divers, and I will just paint them black. And that's the way I do it. I also typically only run black snubbers on my divers. This one happens to be a clear because I didn't have an extra black one laying around here. The easy thing for me to do on this boat is because my... My salmon divers and my lake trout divers had different length leaders on them. My salmon divers are 18 to 20 feet. My trout divers are 10 to 12 feet in length. For me, it's so easy to remember because I put my black snubbers on my salmon divers and I put the red snubbers on my trout divers. So when I'm digging through all the crap I got on here, I know exactly which diver is which. So a couple, uh, couple tips there for you. If, uh, if you're struggling to remember <laughs> or which diver you want to run at what time, that really works well for me. Anyway, let's get this thing unspun. And yes, I do run 18 to 20 foot leader links on my divers. And somebody's going to ask, how in the heck do you net a fish with 20 feet of line behind the boat? I hand line them. We hand line them on this boat. Many, many other boats, in fact, most boats that I know around here, hand line as well. Longer leader, stealthy leader, uh, it's just I think it puts more fish in the boat than the shorter leader. It's my two pennies. If you disagree with me, that's fine. I respect it and we'll still be friends. I'll still send you a Christmas card. But there's a lot of different thoughts on how what size leader to run. This is the size that I run. I trust it. Catches fish. How are we going to run a spoon out here? Because I am running, sorry, I'm reading. <laughs> my wife, my wife's on here. All right, I've got to interrupt this for a quick story because my wife just chimed on here. <laughs> so my daughter and I had this plan a little while back. If you had not seen that joke, Mother's Day card, where you open it and it just repeatedly says, Mom, 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 over and over, and it will not turn off. The only way you get it get it to turn off is to rip it apart and tear the battery out. And if you rip it apart, glitter goes everywhere. Anyway, I gave that to my daughter and she just gave it to my wife. They're having dinner right now at my house and she's a little irritated about the card, but she's got a good sense of humor. She'll be fine. Anyway, 50 pound liter is what I run on my divers. And that is not ideal for spoons, especially because at the end of my 50 pound liter, I typically 
invariably almost always have a Dreamweaver DS6 size swivel, which is definitely not the ideal size for spoons. They're almost the same size as a darn spoon. So how are we going to get a spoon on the end of this thing? Well, there's two easy ways. One is you can have divers set up. With 30, I run 30 pound suffix line for my divers if I'm going to run spoons with them. You could have a diver set up with a 30 pound leader on there, and you just use that specifically for spoons. But the easier way that I found is at the end of your normal leader behind your diver. Let me get to that again. I just grab one of our sliders, one of our normal downrigger sliders, our free sliders, six feet long. These are 30 pound test, and these have Dreamweaver DS size two swivels on here. It's one or twos. Much, much better suited for spoons. Six feet long, 72 inches. That's a typical slider length here in Michigan. And all we do is we just hook that slider right on the end of that main leader. That's all there is to it. Then, Main leader, 50 pound test, down to that 30 pound test suffix. Six feet away from that, you just run a spoon. That's all there is to it. It is not rocket surgery in any way. And it works. It works wonderfully. Throw that Captain Gary on there. That's it. You're still gonna you're gonna have to hand line it. Of course you are. Uh, if, if you're not comfortable with that, maybe set up some lead, some divers rather with just that 30 pound. Uh, mono on there, so you just run spoons that way if you don't want to hand line. But if you've never hand lined a fish, try it, give it a try. You, you might booger it up, you might lose the fish, I don't know, but it's worth a try to you. Uh, you know, for the longest time when I first started salmon fishing out here, I ran like six foot long, seven foot long leaders because I didn't know how to try to hand line, I just didn't trust myself. First couple times I did it, it was a little sketchy. But after that, there's no problem. Absolutely no problem. And I know some, some boats are smaller. Of course, there's a lot of smaller boats out there. You think, man, my boat's too small. It's not. You can do it. You can hand line fish in. Don't overthink this stuff. Give it a rip if you haven't already. And I think you'll be highly impressed with what a longer leader will do for you behind your divers. So that's it. I mean, 20-foot leader plus a 6-foot leader. So we're, these are 25, 26 feet behind the diver where these spoons are going, which is plenty of stealth, plenty. I will take this setup, I will take this setup over a slide diver any day, any day. And that is just uh, <laughs> Rick W. saying Father's Day is coming. Oh yeah, Rick, I know I'm going to get it. I'll get it somehow. <clears throat> anyway, um, that is how we run spoons on our divers here on our boat, and it works great. That is it. That is the topic of the week. If you were, if you thought I was going to come on here and give you some magical formula for the, for to catch the million more kings, it, it, you know that's not going to happen. There's no magic formula out there for that. But I, I can pretty much. I don't want to say guarantee because that's such an ugly word. But I can say you will catch more fish by running some spoons behind some divers with that setup, hand lining them in. Give it a try. It's worth a try. All right, guys, gals, that's topic of the week. That's what I got. If you've got questions, throw them out there right now. I'd be happy to answer any for you. We are, I don't know, how long are we into this? We're ways into this. <laughs> Ninja Nick saying, uh, I just gave him the secret formula, 20-foot leader. Yeah, it works. It works. Doesn't matter if you're running one or two divers aside. No, Scott. Scott Garbs, it does not. We we will run those high divers with spoons on them all day long. And typically on my low diver, I'm still running either a meat rig or a flash or fly. No, you're fine. Joe Wilbaum saying, How far off do you run the ball or how far off the ball do you run your spoons? Do I use mags, regulars, or slims? Joe, I run, you're, my, 
I have a video out regarding spoon use, and there's something called the 100 foot rule. If you're just getting into spoon fishing, the 100 foot rule is a really good way to start off. And the 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 basics of the 100 foot rule is is you always want to have something add up to 100. And what I mean by that is if you're running your cannonball at 50 feet down, put a 50 foot leader on the spoon or on your gear. 50 plus 50 makes 100. If you're running 80 feet down, put a 20 foot leader out. If you're running 10 feet down, put a 90 foot leader out. So you're always adding up to that 100 feet. That is the rule that I stuck by for many, many, many years. Uh, and it works, works really well. If you don't want to mess around with that, 25 to 45 feet, uh, depending on how deep or shallow you are, the longer back for your shallower trolls, a little closer for your deeper trolls, 25 to 45, 50 feet, somewhere in there is also a workable rule of thumb. And I run everything on my downriggers, mags, slims, standards, you name it. Here's a trick where you can run, you know, if you want to run a mag on your on your main line in a, in a slim up above it, that's fine. Uh, but that's not set in stone in any which way. It does work, though. But play around. Just experiment. Like I said, it don't overthink it. Just go out there and do the things that do the things that you hear out here, and you'll find the things that you're comfortable with, and you'll gain that confidence uh, in your fishing ability. And that, I've said this before, and I don't mean to just sit here and beat on this, but confidence is everything out there fishing. Even if you're not catching fish, your confidence level, but you're going to feel like you're going to start catching fish. You're not going to slow down. You're not just going to give up. You're not going to stop. You're not going to uh, start or stop changing baits. You're not going to stop moving around. Your confidence level is going to drive you to succeed out there, change up the baits, run the things that you're confident in. A lot of ways that confidence really pays off, not just in fishing, but everything in life, everything in life. <clears throat> All right. Todd, thanks for all the thumbs up. Yeah, the thumbs up definitely helped the channel. Also, if you have, if you're on here and this channel helps you in any way, if you want to subscribe, that would be wonderful. I don't know for whatever reason, my subscriber rate for this year is way down in the garbage hole compared to last year and the year before. Man, it is nowhere near what it was. So I don't know. Maybe this channel's tapped out. I have no idea. But uh, either way, I'm still here. John Kepp saying the A-bomb has already got you three kings this year. Man, that, that is such a good spoon, John. Yeah, that is such a good spoon. Cool. Uh, Bill Dickham saying, I can't remember if I use different length rods on my divers. Yeah, uh, my, my high divers are 10-foot rods, Akuma Convector Pro wire rods, 10-footers. Same type of rod except 9 feet in length on my low divers. Kirk Filippo, I run, I run cable. I run the uh, the Big John steel cable on my downriggers. Steve Steele, you got to stay faithful. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Such a good community on here. I love coming on here and just just talking with everybody. Anyway, let's uh, let's check out the poll. See where we're at on the poll. We got 88 votes. I'll close that down in a minute or two. If you have not taken the poll yet, please do so before I close it. Uh, the question, if you could fish one salmon tournament this year, it would be a Manistee tournament, the Ludington tournament, the Holland Big Red Classic, or a different one altogether. And please put that in the comments. Right now, Ludington is out in front at 40%, Manistee in second, 32. 22% for the other and the Holland for the big, or 7% for the Big Red Classic. Patrick Johan saying, all the meat rigs have name tags on the front of the card. Let me look. Maybe I'm missing it. Maybe these are customs you sent me, Patrick. Yeah, I don't see anything on these, but that's okay. Yeah, nothing on either one. But maybe this is a custom one you sent me, so maybe that's why it's not on there. Uh, Dan, a bunch of letters, 85, saying high diver set on three, low diver set on one. High divers on three, low divers on one. Bill Kerlock saying I can't get rid of you. 
no worries, man. Thanks, guys, for the thumbs up. There's some rolling in. Anyway, I think this would be a great time, so I'll shut down the visual aspect of this. I will go into the uh, chat only. If you want, uh, if you have any more questions that you want answered, I'll be there. I'll be happy to answer anything. A lot of good anglers on here as well, not just me. No, I am not the best. The, the best does not exist, especially in the fishing realm. I'm not the best, but uh, I'll be happy to give you any knowledge that I do have. There's plenty of people on here that uh, know a lot about fishing. So anyway, let's start closing this down. And we will go into the chat only. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Let's roll back next Sunday night at 7 p.m. We'll talk about other cool stuff. And uh, yeah, everybody have a great week. Be safe. I will see you soon. Let's see if I can find the right button. <laughs> All right, we'll see you later.